Hey, let's see if this is working. Hey, folks, Darius, Pwned Pimp, Jace, Pixel Outlaw. Who else is hiding around here? A name that I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, but hello, Vid, Barad. Oh, excellent. Got the gang. Nice. Okay, so what are we doing today? Yeah, we're going to do a Voronoi diagrams, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong because I've never actually heard it out loud. But uh, these guys. Audio, video, okay. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Macaroni diagrams. Yeah, it's just going to be mainly cutting and pasting and, and glue, a lot of glue. Right, um, yes. So the uh, link I've kicked down there is this really neat trick. So let me bring this up on my machine and I can natter about it over here. Um, these kind of diagrams are something I've wanted to make for a while. And it's a really simple premise. The rule is you make take a load of random positions and then for all the pixels um, that you're drawing, you so you, each sorry each point gets a random color and you color all of the pixels based on the color of the nearest point so like all of these pixels here the closest point is this one so they're all getting colored green and these ones closest to the red and you just get this nice little um pattern now um this chap goes through uh, a simple shader for doing this but it's also quite slow because of the loops and things inside there and one of the downsides was this fixed number of colors. So he's, here he's sending up, um, you know, 32 uh, positions and 32 colors, and then is iterating through for every pixel uh, to find out which is the nearest point. And it means you can ha only have a low number of points realistically uh, and keep everything real time. But then he comes up with this really nice trick down here, which is if we just make a bunch of cones and let them intersect, they'll, the intersection will be the Voronoi diagram. Now you need to um, make sure that the cones you're making have enough vertices um, that, that it'll actually look good, but this should work. And again, it's faster, simpler, and yeah, it's just pretty cool. So I've been, I've wanting to do this trick. I don't think this is gonna take us very long. Um, so I'm also going to see if we can do a bit of instancing to make things faster and play with some uh, per instance data. And then if we've got time, basically, I'm open for any Kepley, Vario, any of those kind of questions. Um, so yeah, you have some time to come up with them or we'll, we can cut it short or just hang out for a while. I don't mind. So let's start messing around. We are starting off with the same code that we normally start off with. Um, the repo is called Play With Verts. It's on my GitHub, uh, which is, yeah, C Baggers. You'll be able to find it. If you search for Kepler, you'll find it pretty easily. Um, I've branched off and there is an episode 15. If at any point during a stream you want me to push the code we've currently got, just yell in the chat and we'll, um, yeah, push the latest version up. So, right, I'll just check what's going on over here. Chris Wellen's articles are awesome. Okay, I'm gonna have to, yeah, read more of them then, because this just was really cute and has been in my kind of to-do for ages. Morning, Barrett. Good to see you. Right, let's do this. So the first bit is gonna be really simple. We need some cones. Um, so let's change this. Ground is gonna be vcone. Um, and let's make one res onto things. And I want to do some more stuff here as well. So it's not going to be a box, it's going to be a cone. And the radius and the height are going to be the same. Now, seeing as we want to be able to cover, like this size, this ground here is 40 by 40. Um, so a 20 by 20. Like a, a, a cone with radius 20 will reach the edges. So that's uh, that's what I'm gonna start with. And because we want them to be 45 degrees, I'm gonna make the uh, height 20 as well. That should be plenty to, plenty enough to start with. Um, what else do we need? Uh, I want the position to be random. So let's, uh, the position. Let's just have a function for generating a random position. Um, this 
random 40 uh, minus 20. Actually, we should do this. And we're going to keep all of them on the ground, so they're going to be the y is going to be zero. So this should be giving us random vectors. That's not how you call a function. That's how you call a function. Cool. Right. So we've got this um, rand pos there, and let's set f the position. Oh yeah, the position of res to be pos. I also want to have a list just of cones for if, we, in case we want to iterate over those at any point. It's just going to be cones. Um, so we'll do this. And that should be enough to start with. Let's uh, compile all these and and go make vcone. Right, so that gives us a cone. Let's make another one. Okay, that's one's there. Let's make another one. That'll do. Right, fine. Um, we've got a few cones. We're going to be giving them solid colors. So we can, we don't need any shading or any of this stuff. So we're going to strip out most of that now. So let's, I'll get the ripple out of the way as well. Um, let's look at render. See what's going on over here. What's Barrett Lincoln? What is this? <laughs> Distractions, that's what it is. I'll check that out later. Right. Um, so all we really need is a color for each of them. So we can get rid of the entire fragment stage and just have color. And we'll pass in color as a uniform. Oops. And that should be enough. All right, this is going to break when we do this because currently um, we're trying to pass other data up to this. So let's split the view and bring that error over here. Move it to the right a little. And let's see what we have to remove. So um, in the update uniforms for camera, we want to get rid of the light pass and the camera position and the other two are probably fine. Yeah, and then we want to go and see where we draw these things, which is up here. I don't think we need um, the albedo or the specular map, but we will need a color. Um, and for that, we should give, give um, well, not every object has a color, so we'll just, oh no, we will. We'll actually put color here. Let's, um, color color init form is going to be um, another random vector let's do I, re I said this last week as well but I do need to make some functions for random random vectors of different kinds so random right that'll be a random color and upload the color of the thing to the pipeline. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now we've got some colors, that's cool. Uh, we don't really need the ground, but that'll be fine. Um, couldn't type for a bit in this thing. Was that the chat you were having problem with, Pixel? That is strange. So, let's move this to the side. Okay, so now we've got different colors. The the uh, trick that was mentioned in here is that not only are we um, making a bunch of cones and rendering from the top, but we're going to be doing it in orthographic projection. So we're going to go and add some extra camera types to our system. So we go over to the camera file. Currently, if I go to render, hmm, how am I going to do this? Let's lay this out a bit more evenly and drop these lines down so we can see everything at once. Okay. We are uploading um, with a perspective projection matrix, and we want to be able to have um, orthographic and perspective cameras. Because we've got two cameras at the moment, so one I want to have just pointing down and doing the Voronoi thing, and another one we're going to have at the side, because it's going to be cool to see what's actually happening in 3D. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Right, so we're going to need two different kinds of cameras. 
Um, we'll do this camera. Camera, and this would be an orthographic camera. And a perspective camera. And the other thing is we've been having just a lot of values hard-coded around here, so I'm going to move these into the camera types. So there is a, um, a near and a far plane. Actually, we can just do this. Um, near, 0.1. I'll keep the same pattern. Name, near, right. And the far value. So these are for the near and far planes of the camera. Um, Pixel Outlaw says the uh, yeah couldn't chat. Yeah, that's weird, man. Oh, I hope that doesn't start jacking up, because you you guys are the reason this is fun. So um, let's get that. We got a perspective camera. We'll need one more thing. We need the uh, field of view in here. Let's get that. So field of view at the moment is just sixty. Field of view. Okay, so now we're going to make a generic um, projection function, which is going to return either a perspective projection or an orthographic projection, depending on the kind of camera. So let's just put that down here. Def method projection. We're going to take a camera of type camera, um, and we're going to take the width and the height, because we need those for both of them. And then we're just going to call, oh, actually, it's not going to be just camera. Let's take this, do a perspective camera. This is going to be width. This one is height. This now is going to be near being taken from the camera itself. This is far from the camera. And this is the field of view from the camera. Oh, apparently we don't have a far. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Got to get those accesses right. Okay, so now that compiles. And we'll do the same thing for our orthographic. Orthographic camera. Orthographic, yep. And we just don't need the field of view. That's the only thing we don't need there. Okay, so that is, oh, no class orthographic camera. Must not have compiled it. There we go, that's better. And then over here, we can just change this to projection, pass in the size we want and the camera, which we already had. And that should just give us what we want, except this is freaking out. It's saying there is no applicable method for projection when called with just a regular old camera. Yes. So currently our two cameras that we have, um, are just instances of the camera class. So the first one we're going to make an orthographic and the second we're going to make a perspective and that will be enough I think. Um, oh yeah and this is def var so this isn't going to update so we need to <laughs> learn my lesson from last time. Uh, parameter. Okay and let's bring up that error again and say continue. Okay so this is our orthographic camera. And we are going to need to reposition it. So the position of that camera is here. We want to set it to be right above the floor. So zero, let's say 50, zero. It doesn't really matter how far away it is. Um, is that really? No. Yes. Okay, sure. And we're going to look straight down. That's going to be the uh, thing. So we need to set the rotation of the camera to be a quaternion based on an axis angle and the axis because I'm going to look straight down I'm just going to take the x-axis and rotate 90 degrees downwards so from axis angle the axis is going to be the x-axis and the angle is going to be minus 90 and there we are we're looking straight down and already even though we're quite far away for some reason let's uh well it'll be the size so I mean, for now, we can just stick a multiplier on here. So let's just multiply by, I don't know. Yeah, 0 0.1 or something. Um, let's see what we get if we just throw a value in there. Oh, that's kind of cool. But that's off-center. That's kind of weird. 
I wonder why that is. Hmm. What is the position of the camera again? Um, a little bit strange. Okay, so let's set the position of the camera to be minus one. Okay, minus 20. Yeah, that's that makes sense, I suppose. Let's see what's going on here. CR doesn't trigger it? What was that? Sorry. Have to hit the chat button. Oh, sorry. Carriage return. Yeah. Oh, that's weird then. Okay. Um, sounds like Twitch are having some issues. Oh, yeah. The, when you, that's, a, that's one thing I really don't understand. When, yeah, when you refresh the chat, uh, you lose it all. I can understand that for those for the kind of Twitch streams where you're having like thousands of people watching and it's just a barrage of crap. But when it's, I would love if Twitch were just to look at the stream and go, okay, there's been like 20 messages in the last five minutes. We can reload all those. Um, hmm, that curve seems wrong. Which curve is that, sir? On the intersection. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that is true. What's going on here? It's... Things seem a bit funky, don't they? Hmm. I mean, there's... There is something that's in the article about the fact that you have to have the right number of segments, because otherwise you can see the fact that it's not a proper cone. So we can see... Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Yeah, like see, we can really see the segments here and that. So he's going to leave some artifacts, but not this artifact. This this looks more like perspective. Did I not change that right in my... Let's go back to the camera again. Oh, okay. Get rid of that. Camera code. <laughs> Re refreshed everything again. Set of... And set the rotation so we're looking straight down. Mm, yeah, there's something funky here. I'm interested in the position, so let's just um, map nil, um, print the. Actually, let's just uh, yeah, loop for thing in things all those and do print the position of thing okay the ground should be centered at zero 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 which means if our camera is up at um zero see it should be able to be at zero fifty zero and look straight down oh come on what is going on today let's reset and just start again why is this offset in a strange way? Hmm. Question mark. I might say fuck it just so we can continue. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rinku, better Twitch TV add-on for Firefox, uh, Chrome, and I don't know what else. Oh, BTTV. Yeah, I was wondering what that was, was as well. Okay. Um, are they all equal position along the plane? Um, the the uh, cones should be. The cones were. Hmm. Center versus wedge. Got it. Yeah, let's tell you what. Let's, uh, let's say screw it. <laughs> Make a few cones. Because this is already... Oh, no, that's completely wrong. What is going on? Right, we've got to have a look at this. So, the camera is an orthographic camera, apparently. You lie like a flat fish. Where is... Orthographic camera here. This should be correct. Hmm. Oh wait, dude. Um. Yeah, I've got I've recompiled this. It's taking the camera and the width and the height. 
Oh, this, this is such a trivial bit. I don't want to get hung up on this. <laughs> but that is a weird angle. That is just, uh, yeah, there, there is something funky here. Okay, so let's, um, let's get back to camera and let's make this a perspective camera as well to see what I've done wrong. Oops, perspective camera camera. Good stuff, right. So then if we go set F the position and set F rotation. Oh, I know, I know what this is. This is, um, rotation takes radiance. You muppet. Okay, let's do this again. Reset, because this is fun. Um, so we can set off the position of the camera to be 0, 50, 0. The rotation is in radians, and I'm giving it in degrees, so I just need to call radians. Yes, that's what it should look like. Good. Fuck's sake. What a stupid mistake. Right, now I can go and change this back to be an orthographic camera. In which case, we go back here, and we just run these things again. Yeah, so now we've got that. Then we can make our V-cones, and we're basically there. Right, if we just, uh, if we do this, move for I below 20, do, there we go. So there we go, Voronoi diagrams. <laughs> so, um, they're all a bit bunched up together, so let's go and look at that, um, random function. Let's make it 140. Yeah. 70. 70. That's cool. Yeah, so end of stream. We're done. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's just so simple. Right, so we're going to need to... Let's let's do some stupid things. Let's, let, let's animate it, because it's boring just having it sit there. Um, and we will... Oh, yeah, we need to, get the, to do the other camera thing as well. I want to be able to switch between the cameras. So... Camera... We should add a... Current camera. Okay, and then we should look for any place that I am using um, camera. And that's this, should use the current camera. And here, when we update the camera, we want to update instead the current camera. And when we upload the uniforms, we're going to use the current camera as well. And now it should be really easy to swap cameras, right? So we should just be able to go um, set if the current camera to be camera one. And then we've got this. We've got our normal perspective view uh, with mouse control so we can see all the cones we've made. I guess I didn't save the code from last week, which means we could fly faster. But anyway, that's, that's what we've got. So we can switch from there to here. And back again. Good. Right. Um, <laughs> done with step one. Yep. <laughs> Phil Fargo just turned up and we're done. Yeah, it just seems I've picked a really... Um, so the, the idea was we're going to make Voronoi diagrams. And um, we're... Uh, and it was a really simple technique, the hack. And so it was really quick to do. But we're not done because I like I like the idea of making it faster and this is a good excuse to play with instancing so um, we're gonna do that but before that I want this to be moving around because it's really boring having it be still um, yes there is plenty still to explore here as Jason's saying um, <laughs> looks like the Southern Alps you must have strange glasses on my friend um, pointy yes multicolored I don't remember um, okay what's next then Oh yeah, let's um, let's go back to our cones, and we want positions. So we will have a start position, which is a random pulse, an ending position, which is a random position. They've all got that now. And then what we're going to do is we, when we update them, we're going to lerp between the two positions based on the time and all that kind of thing. Now I'm going to use a 
fun but hacky thing that I made a very long time ago uh, called a temporal lambda. And what it is, is a, um, it's a lambda which is aware of time and it's basically generates state machines. Um, so what we'll see, we'll see that here in a second. So what we'll do is we'll say, um, let's just call it tfunk because I can't think of a better name right now. We make a t lambda. Um, the argument is going to be the thing we're updating. We're going to before seconds two. We will set the position of thing to be the lerp between start position of the thing and the end position oops, of the thing. And we're going to just use the, there's a implicit or anaphoric, I think is the correct term in Lisp, um, variable called uh, progress, which goes from zero to one over the time in seconds. Um, so if we do this, and T lambdas can complain because of undefined functions. Oh yeah, we don't have accessors for this. Accessor is start boss. And another accessor, which is end boss. Let's move those up because they were kind of janky there. Much better. That now compiles. And then all we have to do is say fun call T funk um, thing. And nothing happens. Damn. Okay, so what's going on? Um, is this getting called, I suppose, is the first thing. Print foo. Um, oh, I know why, because um, we made this function, and then when we first called it, it was actually more than two seconds after we made the function, which means the function has technically expired. So we have to say repeat. And this will do, then do this um, forever, hopefully. It still is being a little quiet up there. Def var again, of course, def parameter is what we need. And then we get this. But what's happening is every two seconds, it's going back to the beginning and lerping from start pos to end pos. So what we need to do is after the two seconds, we need to give everyone a new start pos and end pos. And yeah, well, let's do a couple of things. Let's slow it down a tad because it's a bit more enjoyable that way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I would like to have something a bit more interesting than just lerping. But maybe we'll do that in a second. So what we can do before... Sorry, we'll, we'll put this... Come on, fingers, what are we doing? Here we go. Right, once... After we've done the, the three seconds, and before we repeat, we'll do this a little hackily, but loop for... Um, cone in B cones. Do, and we'll just give it... We'll, we'll use this position to give them new, newer... New targets. It'll make it'll make sense in a second, even if I can't enunciate what I mean. Which makes for great hosting. Good stream. Man can't talk. Right. Okay. So set the position of no. Oh, set the start position of cone to be its last end position. Um, and then set the end position of the cone to be a random position. And so now that is doing that, every time after the two seconds, it's then everyone's getting a new random position and they're going to that. Again, I would like to have a little more interesting things going on. So we're going to use vids easing functions, which are awesome. So we can just use easing f and then we do in, out. Uh, what should we use? Well, let's start with something a bit more pedestrian and we'll just say... Quadratic. So these are different easing curves. We could probably use our graphing thing. I haven't had that out in ages. We should set up a little graphing shader so we can um, visualize these easing functions because we do have them in the GPU as well. Um, so yes, we'll we'll do that in a second. So in, out, quad. So now they'll go fast and slow down and then off to the new position. So it's, what's the, um, what are the easing curves everyone knows? Oh, okay, we've got that full screen. Sure. Um, that was a lot. Using curves. Here we go. So I think these are the ones we want. 
Okay, yes. So we have... Almost this. Actually, it's probably in vid's documentation. Let's have a look. Vid easing. Here we go. Yes, this is it. This was the diagram. Uh, the easing function is defined by Robert Penner. Okay, so let's search for him. Robert Penner's easing functions. Nice. Oh, we won't have to graph it ourselves. It looks like we'll have someone to do that for us. Come on. Um, easing cheat sheet. There we go. Right. So we were using in out quadratic. So we've got in, out, expo, in, out, back. Did you see quad? Oh yeah, there we go, in, out, quad. Do these actually animate or? I've probably blocked a bunch of scripts, so it's... Oh, here we go, yeah. So in, out, quad. No dice. It's probably more scripts. Come on. Oh, right, okay, yes, I've gone. Okay, so if I do in out quad. Yes, this is the curve we're using at the moment. Oh, that's really cool. This is a nice site. Yes, we can just look at the values. There we go. So we can switch out any of these curves. So let's do the bounce one, for example. Is there an in out bounce? There probably wouldn't be. Or oh, I like the in out back. Ease in out back. That's what it's called. In out back. Yeah. Whoop. Oh yeah, cool. But we really want to make this delay a little longer if we're going to do this. Still pretty fast in the middle. You'd kind of want to scale it down, maybe, but... Let's try another one. Uh, yeah, it's just that angle of attack there is really vicious. But I want... In-out circ, do we have that one? I don't know graphics. I, I know people who made some easing functions though, which is nice. Home to paper. Oh, glad you like it, man. I should really finish that tutorial. I said I was going to finish that tutorial. <laughs> so, so we both failed there. Oh yeah, it's nighttime here in Norway now. We, uh, summer just stopped. Like, the other day. It gave up. And so it's fall now. But I just love, I love how quickly we get this together. Let's, um, I'm going to slow it down some more. What screen am I on? Oh shit, I'm trying to print a document on the other computer and now it's thinking about stuff. Are we still live? Yes. Good. Okay. Professionals. Seven, eight seconds. Nine seconds apparently. Okay, fine. And now what would be kind of cool is if we switch to the other camera, we can see what's really going on. Which is just, <laughs> we can track, like say this cone as it moves over to here. And then it's going to stop. It's going to pick a new position. Got something flickering over there, which is kind of weird. And then it fucks off to its next destination. Yeah, these are T lambdas. I, I, I really need to go back. It's from a package called Temporal Functions. Um, and the idea was, yeah, you would have functions which would generate state machines that do a load of things. Um, it currently does, uh, uses, what's it called? Macro expand, damn it, to fully macro expand everything so we can do some code walking, which is nasty. But I couldn't come up with another way at the time. Um, it's a code base I want to revisit. I've got some more macro hacks up my sleeves now, so I might be able to refactor that to be, to at least not require um, a code walker, but use some other hack instead. They move like Cartman. <laughs> what, they're going home. Um, right. Cool, so we've got some movement now. That's at least not boring to look at. And that's too zoomed in. There is the rendering again. Render. 0.1. Let's just change it to 0.3. There we go. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, leave it like that. Okay, so what time is it? Holy, oh, yeah, okay. It's, uh, it's half eight. Hmm, that went quickly. Um... Texture map them. <laughs> Your arms might be Kenny. Yeah, I don't think I want to throw textures on them. I suppose we could do and just leave it flat, but 
we'd want a nice variety of textures, so they would, uh, yeah, they would look different. We'll have to crowdfund the uh, touchscreen so we can see where Baggers is pointing. Oh, my pointy get things again. I'm so sorry. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. Oh shit! Yeah, I was pointing at the cone while it was sliding around. What a dumbass. Okay, right. I've got a goddamn pointing device as well. Let's do that again. <laughs> Even if you got the idea, we're still going to do this. Right. Um, let's load up eShell. And Gromit MPX. And yeah, so what I was trying to point out was you take something like the yellow one and you can just follow it to its destination. And then wait a second while it parks itself and then it's going to pick another random spot to go to. And go straight there. So it is doing these basic linear movements. Um, well, yeah, it's traveling in straight lines. But it just looks so much cooler when we view it from the top and everything's a little bit obscured. Right, that's what I was trying to point out. Um, but it would be cool. Like, to, yeah, we, we need some way of capturing by pointing. Just clamp some device to me and that'll be fine. <laughs> Another week, um, oh yes, sorry, like this is the, this is the great corporate organization that I am. I forget to mention that I have a Patreon. Um, yeah, I, I just realized that the discovery process for people on Patreon is pretty sucky. So I'm not sure where I should dump this because there's part of me is like, don't spam people with shit because I'm, I'm not like delivering. If you're funding me, it's basically going into a into a coffee cup. It allows me to run off down to the coffee shop and get a change of scene and just carry on working on Keppel in a, you know, in a little more comfort. Um, it was a request from one of the viewers uh, to set that up. But I'm, I'm, I'm not doing goals and stuff because I don't, th yeah, well, I just, I don't know exactly how to do that. So I've just put it there. If someone wants to throw some money in that pot, that's awesome. I've had someone, lovely someone's already thrown in 10 bucks and I was super happy about that. Um, Barrett saying, what's the release schedule for Quicklisp this month? I have no idea. It tends to be, it's like roughly monthly, but it's all really down to Zach. Um, and I, again, can't knock him because he does a great job. But I don't know what the, um, I don't know what's going, actually, I should have a check and see what's going in from my side. There were a couple of bug fixes, but this last month and a bit, I've not been coding much. Um, like I said, I think I mentioned this last week as well. Like, uh, I've just been... Reading a lot, but not coding much, and um, this is me getting back into it again. So yeah, like, what's going to be going in the, what's in the release this time? I'll dig through and find out for you, for Kepler specifically. Oh, let's just have go have a look. Um, so, the works, Kepler. <laughs> well, not whatever this is. Um, okay, so this is some performance stuff, probably. Right, so yeah, not much. Uh, I made a mistake in some pipelines. That was four weeks ago. That might, I mean, that will definitely be in this month. But yeah, basically there's been nothing going on in Keppel for the last month, which is a problem. <laughs> so, you know, fun me. Um, <laughs> that's, that won't make things go faster. Okay, right. Um, Max with multiple args. Oh yeah, this was from the other week. This is just, someone on the stream actually reminded me to get this committed. Yeah, so we've got um, so we've got this. Actually, I should be checking in the release branch. Oh yeah, actually, release quick list is behind us at the moment, so I should go and uh, merge this in. Um, let's do that now, actually, before I forget. Uh, release quick list, merge master, push. I've already tested those, so I'm comfortable with those going out. Um, so yeah, very little on the Vario front, and I do, there's not too much that's been going on in the math side of things. I've got a couple of, yeah, I was looking on some, um, like, um, calculating quaternions, the rotation between two quaternions. So it's essentially like there's a vector pointing, you rotate a vector 
by the Quaternion, and then you get the Quaternion that describes the rotation between them. Ooh, fun to say these things. Um, but yeah, like, towards and between. I was playing with those, I'm not 100% happy with them yet. Mainly because between has a hard-coded notion of forward. Um, I was basing this on, um, how, uh, Unity seems to behave. And they have a, like, a fixed notion of what forward is. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, sorry, fixed notion of up. Um, I don't like this at all. I would rather pass in an up variable and, um, yeah, like it. I would rather pass in up explicitly than, than have something predefined. So yeah, I'm, I'm not ready to commit those yet. Um, yeah, and again, old stuff. It has been a while. What else is in the, uh, in the works? Oh, one thing I have been doing, I've been working on the, I've been retesting my bindings for a physics engine called uh, Newton Dynamics, which is a really nice little physics engine. Um, I've got these raw bindings nuclear here, which use, um, which I think have to use the groveler at the moment because there's a couple of foreign functions that take structs by, by value rather than by reference. So what I think I'm going to do is, um, Borodust has been developing some libraries and in the end he, he was trying to get, um, right. So if you're passing structs by value over to C, you have to use lib, um, FFI and that requires the groveler and that's just a pain, uh, to deal with on windows, especially. So what I'll do is I will go and, um, add a couple of extra functions to, um, to Newton itself, because it's open source, just for the ones where you're meant to pass a struct by value, you can pass it by reference instead. And that will simplify a whole bunch of things there. So these are the bindings. I prefer having uh, raw bindings just av available on their own so anyone can use them. Um, I really love how, um, I really like, I, I used to use um, Auto Wrap more, which is a fucking awesome library, um, but I haven't for this because when I'm debugging, to be able to jump back and actually see the foreign function rather than just the big include macro was really handy. So I've got this, but then I was making Isaac, uh, which was on top of Newton. Come on. Oh yeah, I've done sort wrong, haven't I? Uh, Isaac. Oh no, that wasn't the right place. Okay. Um, and this is going through the entire um, API. <laughs> Not in that one. Oh, is this? this must be a really old version. Jesus. Master. What the hell? Yeah, going through the whole API and making it lispy. And the effect of that is we can start writing code like this. This is this is a simple um, a simple uh, physics example. It's not drawing anything, but all it does is we create we we create a world. Where is that? We make a world, um, and then we're going to make a floor and a ball, which is we make a geometry. Um, and we, yes, it's, it's, let me try and remember how this is done. Make the geometry and make body. And that's going to create just the floor. I think that's just an infinite radial plane, like just an infinite plane there. And then here we make, um, yeah, in create ball. We make a sphere geometry in this world. Um, we make a body from that. And then we uh, set a callback, which is apply gravity. This is going to get called every step. And um, yeah, then when you step the world, which is world step down here, this is going to get called all the time from C and, you know, shit just works. It's, it has a kind of, I can't work out if the cost, it's just really expensive processing wise, or it is um, capping my frame rate a bit. Uh, like I'm trying to do too many steps. Um, not too sure. What I'll probably end up doing anyways, if I was using it in a game, is have the physics running on a separate thread and having that, like, you know, um, just writing into some, writing into some buffer that I can then access once the job is done. So, like, just set that off asynchronously, do some other things until it's ready, and then start using the data from the physics engine. We'll see, we'll see. Like, it's, um, it's coming along. I'm feeling there's quite a bit of overhead from the fact that all of these functions at the moment don't have any types on them. 
Um, so everything's slower than it should be. I did a bit of profiling the other day and it was adding up. So I'm gonna have to go through all these functions and just declare all the types and, you know, do all that kind of stuff, optimize a bunch of things. It's, it's not too terrible, but it will, it will help to get at least that out of the way. There's enough things to slow your code down without stuff like that, which I can just avoid. What else have I been doing? Um, yeah, someone mentioned Pile, which was, um, I, I've been wrapping, what was it? Um, what's that library called? Nuclear. Yes, Nuclear, that was it. Which is a really uh, simple um, immediate mode uh, UI library uh, in GL and hooking that into Kepl. So these, again, raw bindings and then Pile um, was to make them available in, in like through Kepl. I also wanted to be able to define the UI in a really static way. Uh, it's not pretty. Where uh, where's, where's Pile? There it is. Um, I haven't touched this in a long time. Um, I really should. But the idea is you can define like... Um, so we can define a piece of UI. In this case, a window uh, with a title and XY coordinates, which is just arguments. And then you just create a panel. So there's um, like in panel and in row and all these kind of things. And you just you just go through and this is immediate mode UI. I won't go into too many details now, but like this is the kind of thing to make a window, and then you can call that just with um, where is test win test win down here. So this is making two instances of that window. You know it works. It's very basic. It needs a lot of love really, um, but it uh, yeah it started. I. I so many projects to actually go back to and pull together but um the kind of like i sketched it out enough that i knew it will work eventually and that's another place where um the ffi lib ffi was being a problem you know like just having that as a dependency and windows was a problem and borrow dust once again he was making bindings for this as well for his game engine um so i don't want to extract his ones from there but i will use his version of nuclear because he's already gone through and done that uh, the FFI fixes that we need. So yeah, so we don't have to use libffi. Sorry, FFI fix. The struct fixes that we need so we don't have to use libffi. That'll come too. Is there anything else in here that I've been doing? Not so much. Mainly I've been reading recently. Um, but yeah. Cool. Good question, by the way. It was actually, it's been a while since I reviewed that. Um, any more questions while we're on it? Oh, push it, push it, push it, push it. Good point. Good point. Before I break everything. Um, um, yeah. Nice. Push that code. Yeah. Uh, there's some code that builds the quaternion between two vectors in ILM base, part of OpenEXR. Ooh. Thank you, Mr. Underlay, over there. Um, I don't know what that is, but I have to go look it up. That's awesome. Um, Baggers, can we play around with instancing a bit? Of course we can. Yes, we'll definitely do that. Um... Do you use Git Flow? No, I have no idea what that is. I'm using uh, Magit in Emacs, which is just the best damn client. It's so good. Um, Backers has been in Borg mode. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> but it, it might be good. So you're like, yes. And if not, no. How dare you? Um, Okay, yes. Oh yes, Borg mode, assimilating. Ah. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Right, let's do some, uh, let's make this instanced. So, what we've got right now is a whole, a whole missing variable. Cool, vcones. We got a whole bunch of cones, and each one of them at the moment is its own draw call, which is stupid. Um, we only need to really, like, we should use instancing, 
so we can draw this only once. We still need the color information and the position information for all these cones though. So um, we'll have to make sure we can provide that in some way. So the first step, I suppose, let's, um, I don't know what the first step is actually. I don't know if we got here, by the way, I'm slightly distracted. Yeah, so 100 and 134, that's, uh, that's a lot. Reset, actually, let's go to the reset function and Does reset reset the camera? Doesn't look like it. Nope, good. Then reset. Okay. Um, I'll make one cone and just leave it doing its thing. Um, okay. So when we draw stuff, which is down here. Nope, it's not there at all. Um, where is it? Oh, of course, I'm an idiot. It's over in things. There's draw. Draw. That was not how I wanted to jump around. Anyway, trying to get used to using H Ace Jump in Emacs, and I'm still not there. Actually, what's it called now? I've the replacement for Ace Jump. Anyway, um, okay. So draw is calling this pipeline, and um, instead of hundreds, I want thousands of these cones. So we can just say with instances, um, a thousand, and then we've got a thousand cones. And it's still running nice and fast, which is cool, but they're all in the same place. And so we need to provide the positions and color information, but we can't do it with uniforms because um, their uniform is uniform for the entire draw call, which means every single cone. Um, and we can't, what was the other thing we can't do? We don't really want to put this in the um, the data for the cone itself um, because, well, no, we would have to update like every vertex in the cone, which is just disgusting. We're not going to do that. So what we need is a separate buffer of data, uh, just holding the positions and the colors, and we're going to update the positions every frame. Um, and we could run that on the GPU as well, probably. How would we do that? With ways. We'll, we'll, we could look at that another time. We'll do the uh, just a simple... Um, instances like per instance data and i know we can do it in Keppel because i added it a while ago and i completely forgotten how so we will find that out together <laughs> um i think i've got an example that does it though so if i go to the works Keppel examples it's not that it's Keppel dot examples and hopefully there is instance array there we go instance array triangles so, how do we do this? I think it was down in the stream. So yeah, here we have the vertices for the triangles in this example. We have um, the, what have we else have we got? We've got a GPU array for all the positions of the instances. So here we're gonna have a hundred, um, hundred instances, here we go. So this is going to be the per instance data, and then makes a vertex stream, sorry, a buffer stream, with the vertex data, which is there, and then um, a list, oh, just a cons pair actually, of this array and one. And this is saying we're going to iterate through one element of this GPU array per instance. Um, if it's two, it iterates once through every two instances, if I remember that correctly. Or is it the other way around? I don't know. Um, let's check the documentation. It didn't like that at all. Um, okay, make buffer stream. That's because I haven't loaded this package. Let's go to the REPL and put it here. Oh, it's bad. I haven't updated the documentation yet. Shitty. How dare you? Okay, um, so that's another to do. I've got to write some documentation for that feature. <laughs> but here's the details anyway. The important bit is the cons around positions. This says that GPU contents will be per instance data. Usually it's one GPU array element per, per vertex. Per, per vertex? No, per, oh yeah, so usually it's one GPU array element per vertex because you're streaming in 
uh, per vertex data. One means it's one GPU array element per instance. Two means it's one GPU array element per two instance. Okay, I remembered it, right? I just can't read. So that's fine. Let's go back to render. Not render. Go back to things. And then we need to... Where do we make... Hmm. Oh, let's just, just fuck it. We'll just start making some things. Okay. Um, therefore, per con, uh GPU data is nil. Econ init cones or something. Set up per cone GPU data is make a GPU array. Let's say we're going to have a thousand cones. That seems to be where we're going for right now. I'm going to say nil. We are going to have um, the dimensions be 1000 and the element type be something. Um, Devstruct G, we are going to make the uh, type of this of the elements in this array. So we will have, what should it be? Mm -hmm. um, oh, this will be interesting actually. I don't think I've passed in per instance structs before. So we might find a bug here. We'll see. Um, we'll hack it another way if we run into that. So def struct G and it's gonna be cone data or something. That'll be fine. And it's gonna be position, which is a vec three and actually that can be a vec two because we're not going in the y coordinates and the color which is a vec three uh, and we can also say accessor uh, which is going to be position and this just makes it easier to work with in the uh, gpu functions so that's cone data cone data Make GPU array. Oh yeah, element type is written like that. Okay, so now if we do init cones, good, that makes a GPU array. And everything in there is undefined, so it's gonna be full of garbage right now. Let's do unless uh, v cones, then initialize this. And then we can go put this in the reset function. Oops, play with that. Double list. Cool. And then the kind of funky thing, though, is it's um, it needs to be attached into the vertex stream, and I'm not 100% sure on that API. It's all right, but it could be better. Um, I just saw your, uh, Barrett, I just saw your early alarm here and I thought something, <laughs> thought it was an alarm for something critical. There's some funny things going on in that, that corner of the curve over there. So, um, anyway, right, let's, um, what is going on? So we made a bunch of data and now this cone, which we make here, I'm just going to take this whole function and dump it up here because we've got to, yeah, we've got to change this up a little. So this is the stream that we need to make. And we actually need to do this. We need a list of vertices, and then we need a list of our uh, per cone data and one is, um, oh no, it was cons, wasn't it? But anyway, yeah, roughly this. That's gonna be the call to make this, this stream. Um, and I don't think, like, at the moment we've got this uh, caching system for meshes, which are these buffer streams. Do I want to have that for this as well? Um, I think we'll just do without it for now. So this is making the cone data. This is
It'll all come together soon. Right. Def uh, cone stream which is nil. Um, and it cones last cone stream do this set a cone stream to be this buffer stream now hopefully that'll make some sense oh yeah so we don't have radius and height defined yet but they are 20 and 20 so we're going to be replacing this with a cone stream like this Hopefully, that'll do something. Um, because we're because we haven't initialized all the GPU data, like all the data in this GPU array, um, there's a good chance that the cones will be all over the place to begin with. But I just want to see that this code doesn't crash, which it doesn't, which is all right. Uh, let's look at the per cone GPU data, and let's look at the cone stream. And it has two GPU arrays, which is good. One that is, oh yeah, here we go. Get confused there. What's going on here? Oh yes, yeah, I can see it's our cons pair. So yes, we have our um, this type. Which, that had jumped to completely the wrong code. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. Okay. Uh, the GPNT, anyways, is a structure that holds a position, a normal, and a texture coordinate. I think we're only using the position at the moment. Oh, yeah. And then we were using the normals before. And then we've got our array of cone data of a thousand elements. And we're going to have, like, this uh, one on the end means just going to be one per instance. So it looks like it made something. And that's cool. We need to populate that GPU array though, because right now it's going to be a, it's going to be a mess. So if we look at with GPU array as C array, what? Oh no, as C array, and let's bring the other code up because I've got terrible memory and I can't remember what we called things. Yeah, per cone GPU data. we bring this down as a C array and then we go arefc uh, into that array and get the first one out. Yeah, there's some cone data. And what is that object actually? I don't even know what that is. That's probably a pointer. So yeah, it's only going to be valid inside this scope. And we can say print um, the position of the data. And you see we can just got gibberish in there. Or some value that was just lurking around already. And same is going to be true of color. But they are the right sizes. We need to go through and initialize these now. Um, yeah. Oh, I'll catch you in a minute, Barrett. Say hi to your daughter. Um, Pixel Outlaws had to restart the chat three times. Man, that sucks. What is going on? Um, <laughs> Good to see you, Chase, for episode 47 of Erosion. Fuck you! No, we're not. <laughs> we're leaving Erosion well alone for now until... Actually, that might be another stream. We'll try and implement some of the debugging features we need in Keppel. I'm not sure if that'll be good to watch, but, you know, I need to do it. That'll be some peer pressure. Um, Nick auto-completion is missing in the, a moment in chat, too. Damn, man. That's a bummer. Um, go on, Twitch. Don't be YouTube. I'm glad it's not over there. Pixel Outlaw, I really need to look into Lisp CFFI for my own education if nothing else. It's good. It really is impressive. Um, yeah. Yeah, C, C++ interop is like it's non-existent, but it's pretty much no way around that. I mean, like the um, 
the Python boost stuff seems to be the only kind of sane-ish way to talk. To, I, and I don't even know how that works. I, I need to look into that someday because that confuses me. Um, yeah, actually, you guys probably know. How does how does Python's boost C++ interrupt work? What is going on there? Why can they talk to C++? Right, in the meantime, we've got to populate this with data. So we are going to go through and... Where's our update? See, we're not going to update in the same way, I don't think. How are we going to do this? Well, let's just hack it into the main loop and then we'll move it to a better place. Look, <laughs> it's gone to a better place. Um, we're going to loop through all the things and we are going to write into the the uh, GPU array. So we'll actually do the same thing as we did just a minute ago with the GPU array as a C array. And that uh, maps it down into local memory so we can screw with it. And then what was it called again? The da, 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 per cone per cone GPU data is going to be mapped. Yeah. And we'll have it as a the C array in a variable called C array or car because we don't want to, <laughs> we, just, we love overloading names all the time. Um, for i below 1000, um, do, actually, do I have, I'm not sure if I've defined this length. Oh no, you can't, oh, you can't define length for your own things without using extensible sequences. Why don't we have this? Anyway, um, I guess we have uh, dimensions of uh, per cone GPU array. Yeah. So we can just take the car of that. We're going to set if. Um, how are we going to do this? Well, let's do it the same way as we did it in the REPL as well. Um, element is going to be arefci of um, carr. Set of the position of the element to be what? Oh, actually, yeah, we, we do need to go through. Oh, yeah, I'm getting myself confused here. Even though we want to make a thousand of them, we need to actually go through the ones we're simulating. So it's for thing and things for i uh, from zero, I guess. Do this. Set the position of the element to be the position of thing. And the same goes for color. Don't really need to set this every time, but we will. That can be an optimization for another day. Oh, so, okay, so that should be writing into GPU memory now. Let's see if it crashes. Yep. Variable thing is unbound. Draw thing. Oh, yeah, this is... Um, this has changed. Um, draw cones. I guess it's the uh, situation. Actually, yeah, so... Oh man, <laughs> having to restructure some things. Okay, so for thing and thing, let's do draw thing up here. Let's leave that how it was. Um, draw cones, we'll get to in a second. Um, and so now I'm actually quite glad that we've got the two different arrays. We've got this separate V cones one, right? Um, which is this. Oh, did that not get cleared on reset? Ah, oh, that's stupid. Lots of things to do. V cones. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, just evaluate that now. Right. So for cone in V cones. Um. 
And then this function doesn't exist, which that's fine. But that is working at least. Okay, so now apparently we would be packing data into the GPU array if we had any cones. So let's make a few. We won't be able to see them because we're not rendering them yet. <laughs> we shouldn't be rendering them yet. Why are we rendering them? Oh yeah, because we're still adding them to the things list here. Reset. Now, okay, now only the ground is in things and in V cones, we do have one cone, which should mean that if we have our GPU array and we pull out the first thing and we print the color data, it is now populated and it should match the color of the first thing in V cones. Yes. And the same goes for the position. No. <laughs> and the reason is that our, um, oh yeah, we're actually writing one more element than we should be. Oh, that's gross. Okay. Um, okay, so. Lots of allocations. Just what the world needs, more. Um, let's try that again. That looks a little better. Minus 36 and 42, and that matches with what we had up here. So we seem to be packing our, uh, packing our GPU array okay. Um, now, so we, we made an, an array, so we can have up to a thousand instances, but, um, we're only packing the number of cones we've created, so we need to go to our render code again. Which is, where is it? I don't know. Instances. Okay, so we may need to take a copy of this. And we're going to define the draw cones method. Or function, rather. Uh, and with instances, and that's going to be the length of v cones. Fine. Um, Oh, there's a bunch of things that aren't going to be the same now. This is interesting. How much time have we got? Ah, we've got some time. That's cool. Because uh, we're going to have to go change our vertex shader and a couple of other things so we can... So this will work. Eh, it should be fine. It should be fine. Let's see. So... <laughs> thousand... Well, however many instances based on the length, we've got our data that's packed... And that's going to be coming from the buffer stream of um, a cone. Now, technically, cones no longer have to have streams in them at all. Um, I mean, it's it's just a, a pointer to this same array, so it's not really a, doing any harm. But um, we're just going to be drawing once. It's going to be one draw call. Oh, scale. Um, yeah, we don't have color. Well, this is interesting. We might actually have to make a completely separate pipeline for these uh, instance things. In fact, we yeah, we definitely will need to. This is what you get for muddling along. Okay, so let's just take... All this code, and we're going to paste it down here. And then we're going to change sum into inst. And this is going to be our new pipeline. So we don't need a scale. Uh, we're not going to be able to have a, a model to world matrix. So we're going to have to make that ourselves up here. Um, well, let's. Let's just compile what we've got so we have some code. Oh, actually, we don't need to. We can use the same um, fragment shader. No, we can't because we're going to be passing up our colors, not by uniform. Okay, so ours is going to be still different. Okay, instance pipeline. 
we're going to be using this. Uh, we can get rid of scale though. We don't need scale. <laughs> Symbol pos is undefined. Ah, you're an idiot, Chris. Too eager to destroy things. Okay, so there's that at least. We can get rid of scale. We haven't got a model to weld, and there's no reason to pass up color. Because we're going to be getting this from elsewhere. Symbol color is undefined, that's true. So for now, we'll just make everything red. And that's it. No uniforms that we actually care about for now. Um, we will need to, the majority of these, um, so we don't have model to weld, so we're going to have to remove that in a second, but weld to view and view to clip were being provided um, in a separate function, which was up here, which is up, upload uniforms for cam. So we'll do draw cones taking in camera and we'll just, because we're only gonna be doing one draw call. This was an optimization from before. Um, and so the idea was we were drawing, say we were drawing, doing a thousand draw calls, but we didn't need to upload these three uniforms every time because they were gonna be the same for every draw call. So we just uploaded them once um, by passing in a nil stream. And yeah, then we did the rest of the rendering. But this is only going to be um, is only going to ever be doing one pass because we're using instancing. So this stuff we can steal and stick in draw instances. So luckily, we still get to keep some code. Okay, so this still leaves the model to world matrix, which is tricksy. Um, how are we calculating that at the moment? Um, in our draw function up here, we have a get model to world space method. Okay, and it's um, handling rotation and translation. Now, we don't need to worry about rotation because all the uh, cones are already pointing upwards. Um, so we do need to create a translation matrix though. Now, one thing I do need to do in future is to provide GPU equivalents for all functions in our maths library, but I don't have them yet. They're not particularly, uh, they won't be particularly hard to make. Um, but it will need to be done. So we need to make a translation matrix. Now, if it's just translation, and we don't need to do with the matrix. We could just add um, the position of the vertex. Like we can add the per instance position onto the uh, vertex position and that should move it. Yes. So I think we can get away without this code entirely actually. We'll just do the translation manually. So we'll say plus. That's another thing because we're passing in a like two streams now, like, sorry, we're passing in one stream with two GPU arrays mapped into it. Um, we've got the per inst data, and that will be of type cone data. Oh, I hope this works. <laughs> it's gonna be a position of per inst data. There's no applicable method for plus with, ah, but at least it knows the types, so we're getting there. Okay, so, um, Per inst pipos. No, that's per inst pos is this. X of per inst pos. Y is zero. Why didn't I just put a vector three in there? Really? Am I saving that many? Do I really have to care about saving bytes that much? No. Um, Where's the model to world, was it? Yeah, model to world matrix, here we go. Okay, so world pos is really, um, it's 
really just this. Oh, didn't need that bit. Is that right? There is no applicable method for z when called with vec2. Of course not. That's the whole point. It's a vector2. So that actually, I think, compiles. Okay, fine. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what what code we got out of that. So I'm just going to use pull g on that stage. And it's telling me there's two uh, versions of this because uh, we have um, function overloading because of the type system in GLSL. Um, so we will just use the first one. Okay. So we have... Well, actually, this is just going to get the GPU function. I want to see it uh, used as a pipeline. So... Sorry, I'm not being the most coherent right now on explaining things. Oh, that's annoying. Oh yeah, I suppose that hasn't been compiled yet. Okay, that's fine. We will do this in a second. But what are we missing? Is there anything? Um, the only other thing we need to do is pass... Because like, we're not... We're barely using any of this. We only use color. We're not using UV, so we don't need to pass almost anything here except the color from the per instance data. And this means we're using the version of instfrag that just takes one back three. Okay, technically that might be fine, but I'm pretty sure something's going to crash. Okay, it didn't crash, but we're also not rendering anything either. So let's see what's going on. Draw cones. Is it being called? No. Okay, so that's pretty simple. It just means I haven't uncommented this. Okay, invalid um, of argument is zero, good, which means it's the current camera that we're missing. Now it's getting called a lot, but it's still not drawing anything. Troubling. Um, let's go back up and have a look. Let's just say we remove this for now and just put the model position in. I would have expected to see it, the cone, I would have expected the cone to be there, you know? Like, um... Oh yeah. So we should be rendering three instances. Just make sure that that is being called correctly, because it, it will be, but worth a check. This is the code in the pipeline where it has position, a normal, and a texture. Where's the other stuff? Oh, this is a problem. This just looks, this looks rather odd. This doesn't look like our pipeline should look. Oh, I know why. I know why, actually. Our, um, our pipeline is made using the old version of uh, this stage. It now takes cone data as well. Idiot. It should have... Oh, there's a cone. Fuck me. All right, then. Cool. While we're here, we can say color. The color's black. Well, that's a little disappointing. Um... <laughs> Maybe we'll put red back for a second until we 
work out what's going on there. But now at least we can look at this and say, yes, here we go. Here's our two um, GPU arrays of data. And this one should all be per instance. We'll see how that goes. We're getting close. We're getting close. Okay, so now we can go back into here. And where we have model pos, we can return this code. And nothing happens. Also unsettling. Um, what isn't getting done? Um, well, we can go and have a look at what is in that array. Um, oop, for i below, um, length of v-cones, oh, it feels like we're close though, not too long now at least, i print okay, that looks properly populated, but all those cones are sitting at the same place. Um, let's make sure that if I change this to, say, 1, it does move. If I change it to 10, there it is. So it's got to be the data we've got for, from here has to be 0. This would also make sense as why the uh, <laughs> this color was coming through as black if that data hasn't been passed correctly. Let's get this back again. So, what could be going on? Um, we know that the per cone GPU data is correct. And we have... What is it? could be this. Maybe I've, I've screwed this up somehow. I mean, I could just cr try recreating it. Like if I, if I take this and do that, that, sh that should have rebate it, but that didn't work. Um, instance array triangles. Let's go have a look in here again. I'm just going to make this code a bit smaller. So sorry if that's difficult to read. I just wanted to get an overview here of what's going on. Um, yeah, you make a buffer stream with a list of two things. The first one is the um, array of vertices, and the second one is a GPU array cons one. Make a buffer stream, and then I mean I haven't done this with an index array before as well. That shouldn't have been a problem. Let's, I mean, I can remove it and just see what happens. But as expected, that's kind of like garbage. I would have expected to see a bit more garbage there. But, because we need that index array. Otherwise it doesn't know how to draw a lot of stuff. So that's, that's a bit troubling. Right, sorry, let me check. I have not looked at chat in a while, so sorry. Um, let's have a look. Python Boost does fun template magic. Hmm. But, like, doesn't that mean you would have to, com like, if it's using C++ templates, then it, something would need to be compiled? Os ABI for the win. Yeah, I feel you, man. Um, I mean, if you're Os, just have, uh, just use one nice high-level language <laughs> with built-in debugging garbage clicking. Yeah, I don't think I want one language for anything, to be honest. Um... <laughs> Masano! Yeah. Yeah, SVL has extensible sequences. That's, I, just, I, I wish that was everywhere. Um... Boost Python basically uses a combination of template magic to extract data it needs and, a, and C macros to make the interface look nice. Oh, is this all done in like C Python or something?
Oh, right, you have to compile a wrap. Oh, well, that's bollocks then. That's not a proper FFI. Ah. All the magic's gone now. But it makes a lot more sense. Oh, that's disappointing. Okay, so we've got half an hour left, which should be enough to find out what the problem with this thing is. Um, it is curious. And this might just end up being a bug in Keppel. I'm not too sure. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I am out of high power coffee. So I am going to go and get another one. This would be a good place to, place to take a break. Go to the loo, grab some drinks, do what you need to do. Shove a load of chocolate in your face and I will be back in a couple of seconds. All right, I'm back and out of focus. Come on, bring it in. There we are. Couldn't leave it too long because otherwise Ponopimp's alcohol withdrawal is going to kill him. Um, let's let's work out what this is. This really feels like a bug in Keppel. Like oh, we, we followed the instructions and <laughs> we didn't get the right result, which means fuck you Keppel, why didn't you work? So I guess one thing we could do is if we stop this for a second. Didn't even need to pause, actually, but still. We will go and load Keppel examples. Hopefully this won't trash anything. Shouldn't do. They should quite happily sit next to each other. Um, I just want to run this example and see... Woof! Keppel.types predefined text already defines a... Oh, man, is that re... Why would that be... Already names an ordinary functional macro. I can understand there being a function, but at the same time. Oh, yeah, this is a helper from ours. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a bit gross. Yeah, so we are stamping on this. <laughs> we redefine some things. Well, that's gross. So I need to. See where we use text. Do we call it like this? No. So they're always going to be like this. Uh, how should we rename this? K. 
get text. Oh no, that's different. It's here. These samplers are really doing it. We could call it load text or something like this. Either would be fine. Okay. So, replace the function binding and keep going. That's what I was worried about there. Stuff like that. But, let's jump into... Kevl.examples. Let's compile this and run it. And it freaks out. Something's exploding. Ooh, nasty. What the hell? Oh, that's disappointing. I'll have to make a note to go and look into into that at some point. Why is it one bug starts and you try and look at that just that bloody one and they all start rocking up at once? Grr, right. Keppel. Um, Keppel Repel. Get the scene over there. Recompile this. And run a loop. Okay. So this is working, and this is using the instancing stuff I was talking about before. Let's see if I've missed anything. Um, it's a GPU array. Another GPU array. The number of instances. That's all fine. Um, we make a buffer stream saying one and that's it it's, there's n nothing really exciting here um, goes into a main loop and just sits there animating things the pipeline is super basic it's yeah it's just it's just doing this Like this is the uh, data, the the per vertex data, and this is the per instance data. And that's exactly how we were doing it in our one. So this really feels like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a Keppel bug we're running into. Um, there's a lot of fun you can have basically work from that example. Yeah, totally. I mean, we could we could screw around with this, but I want my cones animating properly. I'm just gonna take a quick dive into this to see what's going on. Um, I'm worried that maybe there's something funky with um, when we're making the VAO. Because that will be the likeliest candidate is for some reason it's not not bound. But um, So make VAO, pre-process GPU arrays for VAO, fine. Um, I got a feeling it's something to do with that index array because in the example in the example we don't have an index array and we do in our cones thing so maybe that's the problem maybe I fucked up something in here so let's have a look um, make a VAO from ID yep Make sure that all of these are one dimensional, that's fine. Suitable array for index, yes. It's just asserting, then we've got a gen vertex array. Then we're going in here. Then we've got the GPU arrays we've passed in and the index array. Then we've got the instance divisor. Okay, so this is where things could get funky. Let's just look for the index array, because if that is really causing the problems, it should be around, it should be obvious here somewhere. Um, no, that's, <laughs> that's all it does. Fuck. We've got element buffer, and it's just when we've got an element buffer, we bind it. Hmm. Okay. GL instance array. 
That's a vertex array. Instanced arrays, there we go. Um, here we go. Oh man, this has to be a different color. There we go. Okay, normally vertex arrays are index based on the index buffer. Often useful to have alternative means of getting the index. Yep. GL attrib uh, divisor. Yep, totally. This is generally considered the most efficient way to get per instance data. Yes. It doesn't say there's any funky restrictions I haven't thought of. Attribute index to set. Um, oh, wait, let's see. What's this GL Atrix attrib? Ah. Where's that divisor? Assign attrib pointers. Instance divisor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's. Am I... GL vertex actually divider. Silence. Makes for a really good stream, but I'm... Oh, here we go. So we have a GL assign attrib pointers. We pass in an instance divisor. Could this be where I'm screwing it up? Oh, come on. I need to know. Just feel like I'm looking at the problem right now. Um, <laughs> you could try AG instead of go. If AG will fix my problems for me, I'll happily do it. I don't like grab though. I'm just so used to it these days. I should, yeah, I'll give AG a try sometime. I should also use git grep as well, then like most of the time I'm in a git repo anyway, so then I can do through history as well. And that thing's meant to be balls first as well. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, when there's an instance divisor. That's the important bit. Oh, yeah, we're not going to be able to split that way. Um... Yep, loop through the GPU arrays and uh, this this looks sensible. Um, you could just throw a bit of debug code here. Let's just do. Array type. Let's go on a. Oh, yeah, I would have to go on. Uh, what am I doing? Instance array triangles. I could say stop loop and restart, run loop. And we'll see VEC3 come up there. It's interesting that it came up twice, but it is a VEC3. Yeah, it did come up twice. Why did it come up twice? Oh, that's not good either. <laughs> that's slightly confusing. Hmm. Okay, so there could be something funky going on in there. But yes, like 
for, for those who are curious, this is this is how we're meant to be able to do instance arrays. You just make a GPU array, um, and then every time that you step, you repack the uh, GPU array with data, just like we were doing in our other example. And yeah, and that's it. Like this is such a nice such a nice thing. Like take that GPU data, map it into CPU data, like CPU space, so we can just write straight into it. And then as soon as we go out of scope. This is released back to the GPU again. And then we just do our instances and this second array of positions um, is gonna be used. Yeah, it's gonna be passed up here. Hmm. So yeah, like we might have to just call it broken for now and say the where we got to in um, our example so far. All right, so let's branch off from episode 15 and do episode 15 instance. Um, ooh, stuff's breaking. Right. Um, yeah, but what's breaking? Why are we getting weird drama here now? Ah, fun. Just accept it for now. Accept and abort and we'll go through and just... <laughs> oh, probably because I didn't save something. But um, yeah, let's, let's commit this. So we just know what we've got and then um, start um, temple using instance arrays and push up to episode 15 instance. Okay, that's done. So then what I could do in the next week is um, just fix up whatever that problem is and then at the beginning of next week, we can finish off this example. And then I'm hoping, what I really would like to do next week is get into doing um, shadow maps. So rendering the scene from a particular camera's point of view, storing the depth information, and then using that when you render the scene on the next pass to uh, create shadows where everything should be. Um, I was playing around with doing that this week, but I'm pretty sure I found another bug relating to depth buffers and so I need to go and look into that again. So there are some things to fix and Kep will need some love as you've seen. Um, it's, it's been a month, so I was really in that code. So we'll fix that. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna say like technically we're done for today. I think like since we've got 10 minutes left, it's probably safe to say we're not gonna fix this Kepel bug in that time. So questions, anything else and all that jazz, throw it out now and um, yeah. I'm here to answer the questions. Hey, what a cool episode. Thank you, dude. That's really nice of you. Yeah, it was cool how quickly everything came together at the beginning. Like this instance thing is like a bit of a blip, but yeah, I know. Dodgy Lisp software written by untrustworthy people. It's what you're gonna get. Uh, so Pomp was saying I should reach out to Chris Weldon um to send him a link of this episode i'm i'm i i yeah okay you said if, if i don't yeah like if uh yeah if i don't you will you do you do it that's cool i i feel weird about going hey look at my thing uh that's just that's just me being weird about being a beginner or all this stuff but yeah go ahead i don't mind um that would be really cool if you liked it i showed a what was it actually there was one time i was i did that it was the um the learnopengl.com site, I tried to implement the, uh, what was it, the um, physically based rendering there. And I got it, well, I thought I had it working, it looked really good in one of the scenes. 
And I showed him that example and he was pretty stoked. And that felt really good. But uh, yeah, it's just such a nice implement. Like just using cones is such a... Like you've got a lot of overdraw and stuff like that. But pff, And you can render all this into an FBO and suddenly you've got textures that we can use in like other passes of like... We, we should do that actually. We should, if we can find some other effects that use um, Voronoi kind of stuff as input, that would be really cool. Because we've got this just sitting here now. Um, yeah, this pixel uh, Allah was saying, I was expecting you to do the old raster approach, but the cones was cool hack for sure. Yeah, there's something just feels distasteful about like doing a load of loops in the, um, that you don't, it just felt like there was a, like there would be a better way of doing it on the, in shaders other than just doing the kind of same method as we would do on the CPU side. So I'm really glad. No, it's a, it's a very cool implementation. Be even cool when we get the instances working if, ah, oh man, I'm pretty sure that the actual code we've got in this example is probably fine. Um, pixel Outlaw Cobblestone Textures. Yes, that'd be cool. Yeah, we could stick some noise over the top. Um, yeah, looping in the fragment shader hurts a little, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. In fact, we should do, um, some, uh, normal mapping or some displacement mapping in one of these episodes. Yeah, because if we did normal mapping and then we... Yeah, if we do the for actually working out the tiles... And then we do some noise and use that for displacing the normals so we get a nice kind of, well, <laughs> a nice, a rough texture across the uh, cobblestones. That could be kind of cool. I'm going to need to look into procedural texturing as well, actually making some nice colors. I have no talent in picking colors at all, so I always just like random. But um, one day I'm going to have to build up some kind of intuition for that. Whether I do that on stream or not, we will see. But um, Jason was saying, oh, I meant to ask about compute shaders. Ask away. Ah, oh, so fucking close. What is going on? Sorry, I'm just going to... I'm going to have a look at this while you ask questions. Because I am distractible. Ah, okay, right. It's... um. Get world to view space. Why was this not a problem before? Camera. Can you just put this here? Maybe that's it. Do that, and then do render. There's still some things going wrong. Um, cone data, yes, of course. So, nice. Okay, then the next thing was right. Okay. Does Kepler have any support for them? Are you planning to add it? Because uh, a lot of GL GPU code where you uh, render to texture for computation feels like easier in a compute shader. Yeah, so it's not on my immediate roadmap. And the problem in my head is mainly, okay, so we would have to get the um, that part of the GL, like the GLSL spec um, into that project I made before called GLSL spec. Okay, that, that was some nasty mix of words. I have a project called GLSL spec. It has um, definitions for every function and variable and all that kind of stuff inside GLSL. I'm not sure if I have the ones in there for compute. So if they're missing, we need to get them in there. Um, one of the other things is that you have metadata for every function saying like what stage it's available in. So we would need to uh, tag them correctly with the compute stages. We would then um, want to, I, I would need to add like the um, 
I need to expand the compiler to be able to handle that. And there might be some interesting cases that make that tricky. I'm a, I'm a little nervous because obviously like in um, the compute shaders, you can just write out, you can like, you can write to, it's not uniform per se. You can like bind data and you can write in and out to it. Um, basically, as you can hear, I don't know enough about it yet, but it's, it, yeah, I would, I would love to have it, but it sounds like a shit ton of work and I'm not ready to do that until I'm, you know, got a little further in my shader learning just in with this stuff, you know? I'm still struggling with me with my fragment shaders, so I, I think I can I can sit there for a little longer. Um, next things really on the roadmap are um, transform feedback buffers um, and doing um, adding some kind of debugging integration into Keppel so we can debug shaders because uh, that's and or trying to compile our um, Lispy uh, to Vari, the the uh, Lispy GPU language to compile that into Common Lisp, so we can run like as usual. I'm saying these things badly. A second, where's where's render? These GPU functions are kind of cool. Um, it would be great if we could just run them from the REPL, uh, but it means we have to have them available in Common Lisp. And because there are so many things about this that don't map very well to Common Lisp, like um, yeah, like a function overloading, for example, I would need to cross compile this into CL. So that's another potential project. Um, <laughs> I keep asking for more shader types, man, you can keep asking. I will. I, I do want to get there. I really do. Um, yeah, we'll see about that one. Get it building again. Any more for any more? Oh, actually, that's cool. We, we are just about at 10 o'clock, so this is the perfect length. We've got those couple of minutes so I can sit here and just drink and stare awkwardly at you. And then keep on getting distracted and wondering, what the fuck? What were you? No problem. Um, oh, Jace is off. See you, dude. <laughs> He's not waiting for the last two minutes. But I think that's a good call. Right, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Mr. Underhill over there has a question. Little off topic, but have you tried ECL or Guile? If so, how did it compare for ECL, uh, for, to SBCL for this kind of thing? I make sure for each release that um, Keppel will run in SBCL, CCL, and ECL. Um, and it should be running on Linux, Mac, and Windows on every quick list for release. ECL, it runs theoretically, but the frame rate is phenomenally bad. I am clearly doing some things that causes ECL to take the worst possible code path. And it could be to do with how I recompile pipelines. I don't really know. It's, uh, it's impressively bad. Whereas uh, SBCL and CCL are both like super fast. Um, Guile is Scheme. Yes, Guile is Scheme. I haven't tried any of the schemes yet, actually, which is kind of disappointing. But um, I got into Common Lisp, and then it's like looking over there, and it's like really cool, but also not enough to drag me away. Um, typed Racket is super cool. Like Racket in general, it just, they've, they've done an amazing job at their language integration. Um, I'm not convinced that Common Lisp can't have a similar story, to be honest. Um, another future project in the pipeline that I've been designing is to uh, have some, um, to make a library for making type systems that work over common Lisp code. Well, for, for subsets of common Lisp that you can then define. Uh, but that's again, a bigger project and it involves me reading some papers that I just can't read yet because I don't know the type theory, but I'll get there, I'll get there. That's the thing is just so nice about SPCL is like just the access, like you're compiling properly to machine code and you can disassemble everything and you can optimize things and it's just fucking cool. And if you really need to get it, you can define your own virtual operations. You can deal with the machine directly and still have common list, which is so cool that like you have to have such a good pitch to be able to beat common list. in some of the areas that I'm like, when it comes to graphics, it, it's hard. 
Um, but then there are things that each of them do amazingly well. Like, so yeah, like Racket, amazing for language design. I'm super impressed. And then Clojure, just their whole story of, con of um, concurrency and how they handle data there is very cool. Again, not suitable for this, but super cool. And I would love to investigate it. Um, I like Epic's Outlaw says, I like it, but refuse to write it without mutation when necessary. Like, right, yeah, makes sense. Um, and it, it sounds like, and I don't know this for sure, but it sounds like just the design of Common Lisp means there are some places where it's much easier for Common Lisp to infer things about the types and what's going on than it is for Scheme. But I think Racket might have ways of controlling that and making that sane anyway, so I, I really don't know. If you can get high um, enough level function, Scheme starts to be more fun. Yeah, like, actually, you know, I haven't written enough high level Common Lisp yet. Like, um, but there, is, there are so many things I think we could have from these other, like, so, for example, the whole story of iteration and collections from Clojure, we could have that in Common Lisp. Like, it would be a ton of work to port a lot of that stuff, and some of the advantages they get from from Java's interfaces and how basically they've just got this, um, yeah, just this V table for when they're doing, um, oh yeah, just, just some of the ways they've implemented it means they can get decent performance um, from their collections where it might be harder in a couple of places for us, but we could totally have that in Common Lisp. And I think we could get a lot of the language extension stuff in Common Lisp because I mean, like our macros can do anything. like. When you have arbitrary execution, so we should be able to do the things they do. Um, but it's just going to take time. Just take, take someone with a stupid amount of energy to, to put all that together. And I need to pour mine into Kepler right now. SICB, also, yes, that. That's on the, the to-do list. <laughs> uh, Jace was saying I actually have a little project for porting a lot of cool closure stuff to CL. Haven't had enough time to work on it, though. That's awesome. Yeah, try and make that a... I, I, would, I would love to see your approach to that. And uh, just say, yeah. Think about the performance. Really, uh, like, don't just fall back on um, generic functions. Like, if, there's, if there is a slightly more complex but more performant way you can do it. Please! But yeah, that's awesome. That is really cool. I'd, yeah, I'll chat to you offline about that at some point. Cool! Any more for any more? I think we're done. I think we're done. Time for more drinks of all kinds so yeah thank you so much this has actually been really good fun i will catch you all next week ciao